it is Shannon Williams, the OCPD coach here, and I have to talk to y'all. This is gonna be a lot different than my videos I've been doing recently where it's highly edited and I have graphics and all those things. I'm not doing that, and you'll understand why in the video I'm not doing it, but I hope that you still can get some enjoyment out of this video or knowledge or be able to relate to me in some type of capacity. All right. Ignore the fact that I'm gonna have my phone on the side because I took notes so that I could at least not just be gibbering the whole time, but we will see how this works out with no editing. So, first thing I wanted to just let you all know is, for the past few weeks, if not months, I've been straddling the line between high productivity and burnout. And I've been straddling the line and leaning this way towards burnout a little more recently. And uh, it's something that I've gone through burnout multiple times. I know when it's coming. And I was very, very proud of myself because I had the awareness this time to see it coming and take action. So let's talk more about why I started getting burnt out, what I'm doing to deal with the burnout, and then some lessons that I've learned over the past few weeks and months that you all can hopefully apply in your life to avoid burnout for yourselves. All right, that's not too bad so far. <laughs> All right, so a couple things that happened. December is when it really, really started for me. December, I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I can't even say it. I'm not editing this. But I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I had an amazing time. I, I did it for three months, and the reason I had to stop, yeah, it's March 3rd. The reason why I had to stop doing the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was because I kept getting sick every other week. And that leads to the second part of what was leading to my burnout was I have been having horrible, or not even horrible, but just bad health for the past few months, literally since I started jujitsu. I've been sick on and off every single week since I have started jujitsu when I was doing it. So it started in December, I was sick one week, um, got better, then got sick again, then got better, then got sick again, and that cycle has literally continued since December. The sickness I've had has not been COVID, it's not been the flu, it's been a respiratory uh, virus or some type of infection like that. So it's something that lingers, it doesn't just, it's not just going away. The cough, I was told, lasts six to eight weeks. Luckily, I didn't have it last for that long. I think the longest the cough lasted was probably about 10 days. And the cough was an out, just ignorant cough. I'm gonna say that it was an ignorant cough it was a very, very dry cough, and it would always trigger at night. So I'd just be coughing all night long to the point where I started having to take medication to go to sleep. And this is not a sob story or any of that. This is all transparency. I'm just trying to let you all know what I've been going through that has really led me to burn it out. So you couple, I hate being sick, by the way, which I know a lot of people do, but you couple being sick with jujitsu, which I was doing four days a week for basically three hours out of a night after work, after coaching, after everything else. Um, that along with, I've been volunteering at church every two weeks, so um, Sundays from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., I'm basically at the church, church helping out, uh, coaching, working with my clients, which is great. Also trying to spend time with my son and my wife, make sure they don't feel neglected, make sure we can enjoy each other, so trying to balance all of that, plus external relationships, not external relationships, external projects that I've been working on. So I've, I've if you don't know, I'm a game developer on the side, outside of coaching, outside of work, and I've been working on games for years, and there's a game that I've been just continuously pumping out um, content for to try to get it released. So trying to make progress on that with the small amount of time I've had has just taken a hit on my mental health. I've just really been not miserable, but I haven't been happiest because create, being creative is the thing that really fuels me. The jujitsu was fun. It was physical activity. I loved it, but having my time to be creative outside of work is what really just gives my life more purpose like day to day. I just really feel good when I can be creative and create new things and bring visions to life. So yeah, that was hard for me. And uh, yeah, so those were the essentials that were causing the burnout, just really piling on, just small, like limited amounts of time and all the other things that were going on. So I also want to mention something that was Positive note, me going through this burnout and these different things I've been doing has allowed me to exit my comfort zone in so many areas. And I'm going to read it off here. So 
just be, be, be patient with me. So recently, uh, January, I purchased a truck. And it's a nice truck. I love it. The truck's name is Osprey. It's a Chevy Colorado. And it's a, it's a newer version of a Chevy Colorado, not the current one, but 2023. And it is a beaut, and I love it. Now, before that, I was driving a Prius, Toyota Prius from 2016 that was paid off. And it was great, but it had over 100,000 miles, and I knew it was going to go out pretty soon. And I keep saying that, but we also needed more space. I'm, I love doing things with my hands. I want to do projects at home, work on steps and bring stuff, and I never could fit things into the car. I couldn't even fit a toilet in the car without taking my son home first. So it was just becoming really, really limited space-wise. Uh, my wife was down. She wanted to get a new truck or a new car. Um, we were all just on the same course. I woke up, saw the trucks, saw pictures. I, I got marketed to you. They got me. They got me good. And I decided that day, I'm like, I'm going to get a truck. So that is something that put me out of my comfort zone because now I have a truck loan and I'm paying it off and I hope to pay it off by the end of the year. Like that is my goal. My absolute focus is getting it paid off. Um, Cause even after trading my car in, it, that really just took care of taxes. So I'm trying to get it paid off, but that put me out of my comfort zone. I'm not used to having debt since I got out of debt. I hate debt and I hate having to drive my truck and know I owe somebody for it. It's really, it's really uncomfortable. But what I did was I challenged myself and I said, okay, how about this? I'm going to get the truck. It's basic. And I'm not going to add any improvements to the truck until it's paid off. So I don't have a back cover. I haven't done anything with the wheels. I haven't done anything, any aesthetics except washing the truck. I'm not doing anything until the truck is paid off. And I pat myself on the back right now because I've been doing a great job. I, 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 get, I get tempted all the time and I've seen the little light up Chevy emblems and all the good stuff. But I've been staying focused and knocking down this truck loan. So really proud of myself. Always celebrate your sales. Um, I, I recommend my clients always do that, but even just people in life, always celebrate yourself. Celebrate your wins. It's okay. Literally, pat yourself on the back. I did a great job. I did a great thing, and I'm going to keep up the great work. It's really helpful. So another thing that pulled me out of my comfort zone was BJJ. Getting into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you suck right away. Like, I sucked. I, I wasn't really good. Um, but I was strong and I was fast. And that, that was coming from my coach, coming from my teammates or my training mates. So I learned to use that to my advantage and actually improved over the weeks while I was going. And also, I'm not done with BJJ forever. I'm actually planning on going back when my son is a little older. It's just that I was sick, then he was sick, then my wife was sick, and it's only us. And my son's a two-year-old. So I, I just didn't want to keep getting him sick because when you have a sick two-year-old, it's a different level of sickness. So leaving Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so as I mentioned, I had to let it go recently, and that was something that pulled me out of my comfort zone as well because I had to be okay with letting it go. Letting it go is one thing. If I'm like, okay, I'm just going to no-show. But I had to mentally come to the conclusion that because I let it go, it didn't mean that I failed. I, I still had positives that I was able to get out of that. And I'll tell you about some of the positives and how that can benefit you a little later in the video. But I know me personally, I always struggle with giving up on things or leaving things or quitting things or stopping things because I've always growing up not knowing I had ADHD and OCPD, I have a track record of that. What I did try to do this time though was I tried to say, okay, well, this time I did this for a longer period and I learned XXX. Like I learned so many things and I challenged myself and I had many achievements that I gave myself. So I set many goals. And one of the many goals was tap five people or tap people five times or lose five matches. I even put losing in there because even through losing, you can progress. So I gave myself those little goals and that really helped me with me being able to transition out of it because I was able to say, OK, it was not for nothing. Like It was actually beneficial because I hit these different goals and I pushed myself and um, the physicality of it was something I really enjoyed. So leaving BJJ as another comfort zone thing. Another thing was doing things when I didn't feel like it. I've never really had this issue. Like I'm, I'm typically able to do things when I don't feel like it, as long as the result is what I deem worth it. Worth it to me is typically money. It, it typically has to involve financial security in some, or financial addition in some way where it actually benefits me financially if I'm uncomfortable doing it. That can motivate me. Or if I'm doing something for somebody else. Typically, that's easy if it's like a duty thing. But if somebody else needs my help, I'm selfless and I can do it for them. But doing things I don't feel like when it 
doesn't benefit anybody else and it doesn't bring money or really improve my life in many different aspects, that was challenging. And with the BJJ, I had that. Me going all those days, I was really had days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to go today, but I should go. So, yeah, that was another thing. The only thing I don't feel like it. I'm volunteering. I volunteered the first time I got the infection. I, I sprayed, I painted the entire church um, corridor while I was sick. I went on a Saturday by myself and sprayed and, and painted everything. And I didn't want to do it, but because I gave my word and um, it was something for somebody else, I did, I did want to do it. So piggybacking on that in an interesting way, calling off from volunteering and missing days of practice. If you know, if you think like me, it's all or nothing. It's, I need to be there every single day. If I miss a day, it's no point in me going back. That's just how I am. I've always been like that. And that's how I was with the BJJ. I, I had days where I was sick and I had to call off because I was sick. And in my head every day, I'm like, oh, this is the last day. This is the last day. I'm not going back. And I actually would go back. Even though I was sick and I missed days, I would always go back. And then I realized, dude, it's okay. Like, I didn't miss as much as I thought I would. I really thought I missed a lot and I thought it'd be hard and I would be behind and I wouldn't be the best or my best or maybe I cheated myself, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. It was really good. It was actually good that I took the breaks. So take breaks. Another thing was the volunteering. Also, when I was really sick, I, I had to call off and I just was like, oh man, what if they think I'm a flake or they try to judge me because of it? Then I had to realize, I know internally I'm genuinely sick and if I go around others and potentially get them sick, how does that help anybody? So I was able to justify these things in my head so that I didn't have guilt and feel bad about having to call off or miss things. So that's another thing. Relationship finality is the word I use, but um, this was another thing that helped me exit my comfort zone is reaching out to people that I haven't talked to in a long time. I've always been bad with that. If I, if, if I haven't talked to you, I don't like to even ask you for anything and I'm still, I, I stand by that. But I also have a thing where if I haven't talked to somebody for months or years, or just a while, I don't tend to reach back out and try to see how they're doing or reconnect. Now I actually have done that. It was as soon as today, I'm working on my wrestling game and I wanted to start getting back into the community. And I reached out to people who, when I left Twitter, I used to communicate with. And everybody was welcome and open arms. Everybody was good. But the old me wouldn't have done that. I would have just stayed in my own bubble and just tried to isolate myself. But now I'm actually trying to put myself out there and say, hey, I'm back. I was going for a minute, but I'm back. So that's a, that's a benefit. And last thing is hanging with friends. I've always prioritized work. There's always work to do. But with me working with Jira and doing coaching and having my time kind of spread, I've actually made time, even outside of just my wife, son, and I, like time we spend. Um, we've actually been able to spend time with friends and go with church friends to events and do different things outside of my day to day. So I'm really proud of myself for stepping out of my comfort zone for that. Another pat on the back. So here's some things I learned. I value my time more than anything else, basically. I mean, money is valuable, but time is one of the most important things to me. I really value my time. Uh, me giving my time for BJJ, it, it just, it was hard for me. Even on top of being sick, that element I had to talk with my coach before because that was really hard for me. And if you all think like me, or if you might know someone who thinks like this, my OCPD is what I contribute this to, but if I have something to do at the end of the day, that is all I'm thinking about, basically. Like, it never gets off of my brain until I do that thing. So with me doing the BJJ at the end of the day, I would go to work and then have basically three hours between work and class. And I would go to class and a whole hour early, I would go to class and sit because I needed to get my mind wrapped around what I was doing and get the activity done. Well, when you do that four days a week, that makes all your days just fly by. And I was realizing I had no time to work on anything for myself. I would get out of work, change my clothes, I have a coaching meeting, um, and then I would go right to class. So that's something that I realized how much I love my time. Like even just this past week, I've been so happy just having my time to do what I want to do and work on projects and have freedom to do different things with my wife and my son. It, it's, it's been worth it. Another thing is I'm impatient. I'm I don't know what else I can say for the impatience. I'm, I'm, I'm working on my patience. But the truck, for instance, is something that I know I need to pay the loan off. 
and it sits on my head and I'm thinking about it every single day. And my patience is, oh, I need to just go run out, make some more money and pay the truck off or do this and pay the truck off immediately. I need to do it immediately. So I've learned recently how impatient I really am and I'm starting to slow it down some and say, okay, relax. You don't have to do it right this second. You can wait a minute before you do it or you'll have time to do it in the future or whatever it is, I'm actually working on improving that element about myself. Let's talk about some recent emotions. Um, as I mentioned, I was afraid to leave BJJ. It, at first, it made me think, okay, did I fail at this? Was it a waste of time? Did I flake? I realized, no, I did that for three weeks, um, for three months, and BJJ, people could do that for 10 years. It's something that I tried something new and enjoyed it, and I know I'm going to go back to it in the future. It's just not the season right now. That's it. It's not, it's not the season. Um, I'm not good with commitments with no end date. This is something I actually started thinking about yesterday. When, it, when I have things that have no end date, so let's say, for instance, leasing a car or renting a home, if I have no actual end date for when that's going to end and I'm just steady making the commitment to it or even if I have a meeting every single day, for um, foreseeable future, I have a really hard time with that. I like end dates. I like finality. I like to know that things are going to be done at a certain point. And this even boils up, rolls over into my game development. I build games and people a lot of times expect long-term support where you are supporting games for years and adding additional content for free a lot of times and not even charging. And I realize I'm not even good with that. I like to build a game, put it out there and Leave me alone. Like, I, 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 I've done the work. I, I don't want to add anything else. Um, what, I'm re, what I'm realizing, I need to stop saying um. What I'm realizing now is that there are ways for me to deal with this. So one of the things I'm going to start doing with my games is announcing what, how long I'm going to support it. So I'm going to put a game out, and I'm not going to support it for any longer than six months after the game is out. After that six months, you're on your own. Uh, I'll create new games. I'll do other things, but I won't be supporting that project. And I'll have a clear conscience because I'm going to be upfront about it. I'm going to be clear, and people will know how I plan on operating that. Another thing is that, as I mentioned, just the truck payment, not used to it, so that's been uncomfortable. But I've been motivated. The uncomfortable feeling when I have time actually motivates me to work on things that I want to work on that could generate money or that just get me in a mental space where I'm at peace. Let me show you all something. I never really talked about this, but I'm a huge wrestling fan. This, this Batista, if I had this as a kid, I would have been so happy because it's such a good model, great world heavyweight championship built in there, um, be gold. And I'm going to keep it. I'm not even going to open it, but I love it. And I realized that when I go back to wrestling that I loved as a kid and I play old wrestling games or work on projects, video games related to wrestling, I get a spark. I get, I get this, it's like childhood energy comes back, the excitement. And that is what I've used to channel that into productivity. So when I said I was highly productive, I mentioned I had a lot of stuff going on. Like really, I had important meetings I was doing at work. I was doing presentations in front of big, bigger audiences that I'm used to. And it, there were a lot of milestones, trying to get promoted, trying to do different things in my profession. And this is all in the past three, three months, but trying to get promoted, trying to move, move around and coming up with different proof of concepts and pitching it to people. These are things I've been doing in the past few months. So I've been highly productive. It's just I haven't had time for myself to really just enjoy my life and just say, okay, I'm relaxing for a minute. Let me just be at peace. And another thing I feel is I've been proud of my compliments. I received a lot of compliments at BJJ and achievements and different things as I was learning and growing and improving. So that's awesome and great. So let me talk about a few things that helped me. So keeping daily notes. When I was doing the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I sucked, what I started doing was realizing that I shouldn't, even though it never came to my head, but a lot of people, I guess, assume that the goal should be focused around getting belts and getting elevated in belts and getting different colors and stripes and stuff, but it never crossed my mind. I didn't even think about that. I kind of fell into jujitsu. I went for martial arts training and they were like, hey, today we're doing jujitsu. Do you want to join? I'm like, yeah. And that's what, that's what got me in. So I kept daily notes of those achievements I mentioned for things I learned, so every single move I learned, and then also my progression. Every time I rolled with somebody, I would document the role, and I would say things I did well, things I need to improve, if I tapped them out, if they tapped me out, what move was used, like different things like that helped me. And then I also, on top of that, I had goals. 
So that was the next thing, making small goals. So I had a list of goals outside of the notes that I wanted to do uh, along the way. And I got all of them done just about, but tapping people 10 times, escaping, escaping submissions, um, tapping out five times and different things like that, putting somebody in a, a triangle. Anytime I would learn a new move, I would put that on there, like use this move in a row. So those different types of things were very beneficial in just making me get the dopamine hit every day. Like every night I would go home after training and say, oh, I did that. Or I can add this to the list. And it kept me going, kept me motivated. So definitely making smaller goals. Using Jira for task management. So as I mentioned, with all the things I had going on, me having ADHD, it's very easy for me to forget what I'm working on. And I could jump from one project to the next and not know what I needed to do next. So me putting all of my work in Jira, even my new ideas, I would document them in Confluence. I would break out the tasks that I need to do. Me putting them in Jira allowed me to go back and say, okay, I did these things this week or I did these things the past two weeks. And I was able to actually track my productivity that I was um, doing in Jira. Even with the time, the, the lack of time, I was able to see how much I was able to accomplish. And that was a huge boost for me because I realized, okay, it might feel like you're drowning, it might feel like you are doing too much, but you're still getting stuff done. So don't feel bad about you're not being able to put energy here, here, and here. Just look at the things you have been able to do, pat yourself on the back, and move on. And also, short walks. This is something my wife and I have been doing with my son um, for the past probably month, but she's been doing it longer. But we, we got him a bike for Christmas, and he's been riding his bike in the house. So we take him outside and ride his bike, and just doing that is just a breath of fresh air. I just get to think and be relaxed and enjoy the sun, enjoy my family. So I love that. I love that it's getting warmer out here, too, so be able to do this more. All right, now here are the lessons. So before I hop over to this, I do want to let you all know that um, I enjoy you all watching my content. I hope you all continue to watch it, interact with it, share it. This is not something where I'm just coming in as a coach, just putting the title on and saying, I just want your money. I've actually done more free coaching than I've done paid coaching, ironically. But what I want to do is be able to reach people and help them, even if it's just through these videos. If you think you might be interested in coaching and you want to get some free, uh, free sessions with me, as long as the availability permits, reach out to me and fill out the form. You can reach out to me at theocpdcoach.com. Then I have a button in there for you to fill out the form. And I love to work with you. Um, I love new challenges and I, I love being able to collaborate. And that's what coaching for me is, is being able to collaborate and help people reach goals that they never thought they'd be able to reach. I released my two testimonial videos as well. And one of them was so emotional. The other one was very direct and it was, um, that was my first client. But I've been working with my first client going on uh, six months now as a paid client. This is somebody who converted and they stayed with and they hit so many different life milestones and we just continue to reach new milestones. So congratulations to my client. You know who you are. I'm not going to put your name on blast. But now that I've gotten that out the way, I wanted to go ahead and get into the last point. So the lessons, some lessons I learned. I need to slow down and breathe. Crazy. I wrote that down. This is literally what my coach was telling me when I was doing jujitsu. He said he could feel me holding my breath. Like when I would try to learn a move, I would get frustrated or I'm trying to think about every single mechanic of a move, like a triangle, you know, push, pull, throw this leg over, throw the leg over, don't lock it yet, don't pull your hand off of your leg. I mean, um, make sure you always have a limb touching the other leg so they can't break out, pulling the leg to spin around and get it tighter and then relocking it and then pulling the right way. So not pulling like this, but pulling like this, elbows in. It's so many steps. So I would have, it would just be anxiety inducing just thinking about all the steps that were required. But slowing down and breathing is what he recommended. I also need to do that when I talk. I know this here, but I talk really fast when I have a lot of stuff. That's probably my ADHD. Um, the OCPD in me loves to talk. The ADHD in me talks a lot. I mean, it talks really fast, so they work together. Another thing was doing daily, I would recommend doing daily or weekly check-ins. So as I mentioned with my journal, that was basically my daily check-in. If you can't afford to do it daily, do it weekly. Just check in on yourself, see how you're doing, if you're overwhelmed, if you're making progress, what your priorities are, make sure you are hitting the priorities. And speaking of that, I have a resource on the ocpdcoach.com forward slash resources, but it's a value scale and it allows you to define what the most important things in your life are. That would be useful for this, making sure your priorities are in order. 
because your most important thing is spending time with your family, you need to make sure that based off the time that you're allotting, you're giving most of that time or energy towards that. Next thing was letting it out. So I recorded a 20 minute video earlier just on my phone that'll never go anywhere. But I was talking about a lot of this same stuff and just talking out loud. And I talked about how I need to just make a YouTube video that's not edited. Um, just a video of me coming on here talking and just being transparent with you all because I have been going through the burnout in real life and um, I'm now I'm pulling my feet away from the fire some, but it, it still creeps. Like the past two nights, I've been up to 4 a.m. working on a new project. Not healthy, won't recommend it, shouldn't be doing it, and I know every time I do it, I shouldn't be doing it. However, I think it's just this overload of me having my time back. I just know I can do some useful stuff with it. Um, and the hyper focus at ADHD, so it is what it is. So chunking and setting achievable goals, it's another lesson. Make sure if you have different things you are doing in life, just try to make it as measurable as possible or attainable as possible and make it clear, like make it defined, make your goals really understandable for somebody coming in from the outside to be able to say, this is exactly what this person is doing, even if they know nothing about you. Use momentum. So as I mentioned, two 4 a.m. nights back to back, I have, I've been getting more and more done because of that, like I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the rhythm. Even today, I only, I only planned on recording this video today. But when I came down, I set the camera up. I realized I have three videos in me right now. The video that I'm doing now, a video about setting better tasks and um, goals, and then a video about my experience with OCPD and ADHD. So I had the momentum for me just setting the camera up and doing this. So I'm now using that momentum to be even more productive. Taking breaks, as I mentioned, the walks, those walks were like heaven for me. Just walking outside, not thinking about anything. The shower used to be my break, but now my son and dog always want to invade me when I'm in the shower and come in the bathroom. So that's no longer my time for myself. But um, at nighttime, I do get to just hop on kick and watch people be goofballs and really just get some time to myself. So that's a great break. And my final thing on here is have fun. Like, we take life so serious, and there are elements of life to take serious. But the things in life that do not have to be crucially or urgently or um, inflexibly serious, have fun with it. Today, for this video, I'm probably going to do it for another video, I almost took my razor and just shaved off half my mustache or my eyebrow just to show how unserious the video was. The only reason I didn't do that is because I have a meeting tomorrow with a client and I don't want to have to explain it to a client because that's even more confusing. But what I'll probably be doing on here is just showing you all how I've been loosening up and trying to just enjoy life more. Because as you can see, I'm smiling now. The burnout was getting me. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do what I can to, to balance it out. Like I'm, I'm, I don't want to be over here anymore. I want to be high productivity. I don't even want it to just be high productivity. I want it to be a mixture of high productivity and enjoying life. Those two together, that's my goal. So I'm doing everything I can to take the steps. I uh, hope that you do the same. I wanna wrap this video up. I've been rambling for a minute, but it was great being able to just go through this thing that I wrote up because I think it's very not useful, not only useful for me, but useful for you. And if you like this video, you know somebody who might find some value of it, <coughs> please share. <coughs> Yeah, it's not edited. Um, yeah, so again, it's OCPD coach Shannon Williams. I'm out. I appreciate you all for watching. If you stuck through the whole thing, pat yourself on the back, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you keep fighting for your life. Peace. <laughs>